Hey there, have you ever had the need to programmatically add a class to an element in an Angular application? Like maybe when a button is disabled, we need a class, but then once it's enabled, we don't. Or how about when a form goes from an invalid state to valid? Well, good news, this is actually pretty easy to do in Angular. In this video, I'm gonna show you four different ways. First, we'll use a method called class binding. Next, we'll use the ng class directive. After that, we'll use the host binding decorator. And finally, we'll use the renderer2 class. All right, let's get to it. So class binding is something that you'd want to use in more simplistic cases where we basically just either want this class on here or not. Okay, for our class binding example, we're going to add a disabled class to this button here when the form control is invalid. To do that, we can go ahead and start by adding our binding syntax, which is the square brackets in Angular, and then we'll add the class attribute a dot, and then our class name, which in this case will be disabled. And now we'll bind this to disabled when the email control is invalid. There, now we can see our button is getting a disabled class. And if we inspect this, there's our disabled class. And now when we make this valid, we can see that the disabled class is removed. So that's class binding. Now, in other more complex cases, we may find ourselves with the need to use the ng class directive. This directive just gives us a little bit more flexibility to put a little bit more advanced logic within it. So let's take a look at an example. Okay, so here what we want to do is we actually want to change the coloring on our overall field set based on whether this form control is either invalid or valid. But the difference is we want to have a valid class when it's valid and an invalid class when it's not. So let's go ahead, come up here to our field set, we'll add the square brackets again for angular binding syntax, and now we'll put our ng class directive within it. And now we're gonna put a ternary operator in here based off of the status of our email control. So let's go ahead and add that. And we add our ternary operator. And now when it's invalid, we want a class of invalid. And when it's valid, we want a class of valid. Okay, so we can see that it's now invalid and our invalid styles are showing up. So let's go ahead and inspect that. We can see there is our invalid class. And now when we make the field valid, we'll see it gets a class of valid. So using the ng class directive just allows us to get a little bit more complex with the logic within it. Okay, so now we have the need to actually put a class conditionally on the host of our component. And we can do this with host binding decorator. Okay, to add our host binding decorator, we'll do it from TypeScript. So we'll come over to our component and we'll add the host binding decorator. And the syntax that we'll use within here will look much like our class binding. So we'll have the class attribute and then our class. And then we'll use a property of is valid and we'll initialize it to false. Okay, so this won't do anything until we actually update this is valid variable. So we can do that with a subscription to our control status changes. So let's come down to our on init method and let's wire up the subscription. And we'll be listening to status changes. Okay, and let's go ahead and make sure that we're only taking this until destroyed. So we'll add pipe, take until destroyed. And then we'll need to give this our destroy ref. And now we can go ahead and subscribe. And now we'll just need to set our is valid property based on whether or not the status is valid. Okay, so how'd we do? There it is. So now if we look at our host, you can see we have a class of valid. If we make it invalid, class goes away. Okay, so now what if we wanted to actually apply a class to our body element if this form is invalid? In this case, we can use the renderer2 class. Okay, so the renderer allows us to do all kinds of stuff, but one of the things that it allows us to do is to add and remove classes to elements by accessing them directly. And now, in order to use the renderer, you have to make sure that it's injected through the constructor of your component. 
I've already done this here. Okay, so to do this, we again are going to use a ternary operator based on the status of our control. Okay, and when it is valid, we want to add the class. So we, we will use the renderer and we will call the add class method. This method takes in two parameters. So first will be our element, which is the document body. And then we'll give it our class. So when the status is valid, we'll give it a class of valid. Okay, now we'll need to make sure that we remove it when it becomes invalid. So to do this, we can simply duplicate this. And instead of add class, we'll remove class. Okay, so how do we do this time? First, let's look at the body, add our email address. And there we go. Now it's getting a class of valid. And when we make it invalid, it goes away. Okay, so we have four different ways in which we can add classes to elements conditionally in Angular. First, we had class binding for very simple logic. Then we had the ng class directive, which allows us to get a little bit more advanced. And then we have the host binding decorator to bind a class on the host of our component. And finally, if we need to get really crazy, we can use the renderer too. So hopefully that helps you out along your way and gives you some options for when you need to programmatically add or remove classes in Angular. All right, if you have any thoughts or questions, please leave a comment below. Also, the link to the demos can be found below as well. Thanks for watching.